Hey, what is up guys, welcome to another video. So in this video, we are going to be doing an upgrade on the Toyota Vios, Toyota Yaris, or Toyota Belta. If you didn't know, there is an upgrade from Toyota, which is a auto dim rear view mirror. So that's an upgrade directly from Toyota. So I'm, we're going to go inside the car and I'm going to show you what I'm talking about and how it looks. All right, so now that we're in the car, I announced this about a little over two years ago on the channel. I never got around to installing it because I was taking care of this car, getting it ready and everything. So this is a upgrade to this mirror. This is a manual auto dim mirror. So if you got somebody with high beams on or lights behind you and your eyes are sensitive to activate the demo, you just pull that little lever down and the lights will get dim. This is an upgrade directly from Toyota part number PT. 374-02090. So to open the packaging, it should have everything needed for installation. All right, so you got a little baggie with little phone covers, zip ties, wiring harness, extended cover to hide the wiring, wire looms. And about the auto dam. So as you can see, congratulations, your automobile is equipped with a genuine accessory auto dimming mirror manufactured by Gentex Corporation. During nighttime driving, the safety feature senses distracting glare from vehicle headlights behind you and automatically dims the mirror to eliminate the glare and preserve your vision. So as you see, it got a little LED. I got the auto switch. You got a shift light and it also has a sensor pointed to, to, towards the rear to detect any highlight. Well, bright light, sorry. <laughs> so to operate the auto dim feature, if the green indicator is illuminated, the auto dimming feature is on. If it's not on, push the switch and release. Upon release, the LED should be illuminated and auto dimming is enabled. Shift light feature. It's not what y'all thinking. <laughs> so it's kind of, um, well, mostly I probably don't have a Nissan Maxima, but it has a light that's at the bottom that shines down to the shift location. So the shift light feature provides low level illumination for the vehicle shifter. And it's in the console area. This feature activates automatically and they and functions even though when auto dimming is turned off. So it's not a shift light indicator. Like if you got a manual or whatever, when you reach high RPMs or whatever, when you're ready to shift, it's not gonna be doing any fancy lights. Or nothing. It just stays illuminated to shine in this area. In this case, in the Toyota Vios, Toyota Belta, or Toyota Yaris, this is where that little light is gonna be shining. And then it also has cleaning. So when cleaning the mirror, use paper towel or soft cloth, dampen with glass cleaner. Do not spray glass cleaner directly onto the mirror. The liquid may enter the mirror housing and may cause damage to the mirror's internal components. So we'll set that aside. And then this is the, mirror, the upgraded mirror from Toyota. So that's the sensor to detect if it's day and night outside. This one is a little indicator from what that says. Then, or I could, could be wrong. I don't know. We'll find out once we got it hooked up. Yeah, this one looks a little different. So I believe that's the sensor for the rear to detect any bright lights and stuff. So this one should be the one that illuminates. So that's the back of it. And it comes with everything included. I can't remember how much this cost me because it's been so long. I'm pretty sure I put it in the community tab how much I paid. But if not, I'll post it right now, right here. So first things first, what we have to do is remove this one. So for that, you're going to need a small flathead or you can use even tweezers. So what we had to do on the back side, as you can see, there's a little tad. So I'm gonna set you on the tripod and then we're gonna begin. 
there's a little tab in there. You just wanna, can't remember if you push down or push up. There you go. So that's the little tab right there. And that's what clips into place to this. So now that we got this removed. All right, so now before we sit there and install the, um, the updated mirror or upgraded, you got two options. So you could go with this little one that hides the wiring harness from here to here. So you can either, depending on your style, you can use either that or you can use this it's a little bit thicker, but it also extends as well. This one looks a little bit longer. So I will be going with this. So to attach this to your mirror, you just sit there. Zoom you out. You just sit there, attach it like this. And it locks into place. And then the wiring harness just goes right in, underneath or on top. So I'm gonna set you down and we're gonna install it. All right, so get the wire, put it like that. And then we're gonna slide this down into place. Make sure this stays attached. And then you are going to need a T20 star tool. And we are going to tighten this. As right, so. So all that's attached. Now we're ready for the next step. So that's how it should look from this point of view. The camera's having a hard time focusing. So that's how it's going to look. Now for the next part, we are going to sit there er, like I mentioned in the previous video, my sun visor broke on the driver's side. I do not know how that happens. <laughs> That's like one in a billion, billion, whatever. But mine broke. I got that a new one coming in the mail. But we don't have to worry about that one. So we're just going to worry about this. So for this right here, all you got to do, turn to the side and pull down. That's it. So now... And then also we gotta remove this. So I'm gonna show you how to do that now. All right, next we're gonna get like a sponger or anything similar. And we're gonna gently pull downwards. And then there's a connector on the back side. What you wanna do is push this little tab and release it. Now I'm only releasing it that way. I'm not tugging and pulling on this wire and possibly creating a short. So now we're gonna set this down somewhere. Now next, what we're going to do is slide this harness underneath here, underneath the headliner, and be careful. That way you ain't creasing or nothing, any kind of damage to your headliner. So we're gonna squeeze that wire through there. And then, I'm not sure the camera got that part. So what I did is this, I just pulled it upward, so now it's, it looks, that's a clean install right there. So it's still connected and it's extended and it's lined up perfectly underneath there. So everything had a camera focus. So that's set. So next thing, what we're going to do is we're going to get this piece and how I'm gonna do it. You can have it connected to that actually no nah, i doubt it it probably has to be turned on but um how i'm gonna do it i'm gonna run this horn wiring harness from here run it through here down the a pillar down to the fuse box down here that's how i'm gonna do it so i'm gonna get this wire I mean rubber band off unravel it and then we're going to proceed with that all right so now that i got it unraveled you want to have the white connector facing here so what we're going to do pretty much the same thing Pull down on the headliner a little bit. Like I said, be careful. You don't want to put too much pressure or anything of force. And now we're just going to tuck this wire underneath here. Make sure this stays out here. And now we're going to proceed to removing this A pillar and then work the wiring harness down to the fuse box. All right, so we're going to pull this outwards. And then we are going to need needle nose pliers. 
Let me get y'all off of here. So if you got side airbag, curtain airbags like I do, you'll need this. If you don't have the side curtain airbags, you just pop that whole panel off. So if you do got side curtain airbags, what you wanna do, hopefully I can get this clear. You wanna grab this piece right here that's attached and you wanna turn it sideways. As so, so you can see now that piece is turned sideways and now you're able to take that up. And then for the bottom portion, just pull up and voila. Now we got that panel removed. So next, what we're going to do, is got a couple of these little foam, adhesive foam covers. All right, so I got it. So it comes with a total of three, six, nine. It comes with nine of them. So I'm gonna get about two of them. I'm gonna probably stick it right here. And right here, I'm gonna search on the tripod and then I'm gonna figure out where I'm gonna exactly lay them at. Or if you don't wanna use the little adhesives, you can zip tie it around, but I'm not gonna zip tie mine. So I'm gonna do mine this way. So, up oh, wrong direction. I'm gonna place it directly in the middle and then do that. Put that behind there. And then I'm gonna lay the other one right about there. Hopefully I'm not blocking the camera. If I am, I apologize. So that's how I'm gonna lay mine down. And then what I'm gonna do, get the other side and then just feed the wires down through there. So we're going to feed the harness through the back hole right there, as you can see. And I say that because you can see the light right there. So I'm gonna feed it through the top and then it's gonna come right down. You see my shadow. I'm gonna do that and then be right back. All right, so I got the wire fed through. So basically what I did, now that I got it through here, I reached my hand up here and I used my other hand to dangle the wiring harness so I could touch it with my fingers. Grabbed it, started feeding it down and pulled it down. So now that we got that fed to the bottom, we're going to reinstall the A-pillars. So there is two slots, one right here and the other one right there, as you can see. So on the A-pillar, these little, that's what these little guys slide into. So we're basically doing everything in reverse. So we're gonna slide those in first, make sure they line up and then push down. And then next, this goes directly into its hole right there. And then this, you just feed it back through. Make sure you do that first, have it in there. And then we're gonna push this one into a spot, we're gonna pull the water stripping down, make sure it's lined up, and then we are going to push inwards. So let me get this lined up, as you can see, and then push in, and same thing. So now we're gonna get our needle nose and we're gonna turn that and lock it back into place. All right, so I'm gonna try to do this with one hand again. We got our needle nose, we're gonna grip that and twist it back to the lock position. Easier said than done, but yeah, so I'm gonna grip it from this way, angle. And I'm gonna twist it back to the lock position. Stop putting it into the lock, unlock position. All right, so let me set the camera down. It's a lot harder <laughs> holding the camera trying to do it. All right, now it's locked. I'm not sure. See, it's in a locked position now. So now we could push this back in. Yeah, so I'm not sure why the camera has a hard time focusing on that part. All right, so now we're just gonna feed the weather stripping back in while we install it into its groove. Push up. And voila. So a pull is reinstalled. Now we're gonna go down here and connect that. All right, so before we go to the bottom, we're gonna reconnect it. So I'm gonna get another one of these little 3M adhesives that comes included. So what I'm going to do is connect it 
the little tab portion goes right into it. It's only one way to connect it, so you can't mess that up. Once I got that connected, I'm gonna have it face upwards. All right, like break that. And I'm gonna apply this adhesive on here to hold it in place. So, then next we're gonna get our dome light. We're gonna reconnect that. There's only one way to connect this to. You hear it click into place. And what we're gonna do is push up. So, this is reinstalled. I got All right, so now we're gonna reconnect this piece. Just push in, twist, and, uh, oh, I didn't mean to do that. So you just slide it back in. You wanna do it sideways. That's so. Keep pressure holding upwards towards the roof. And then now that's reattached. And of course, <laughs> my driver's side something about it, so it's broken. So now we're gonna go down here. You're going to remove the little coin box, pull in on both sides, and voila. All right, so once you're down here, we're going to remove this piece right here that's right underneath the trunk release. So what we're going to do is slip up on here. We're going to set that aside. And then we're going to pull back here, pop this off. And there is, there you go. So there's a ground right here. So I'm going to get the ground. If you don't know which one's the ground, the solid black is the ground wire. And then the black with the red line on it, that's your positive. So what I'm going to do is separate them two up to about right here. And then I'm going to line the ground underneath here. Have it come down and mount right there to the body ground. All right, so I'm just going to do what I told you. Just pull them apart. So about right there. So let's see. So I'm gonna have to do it some more, a little higher. All right. So now I'm gonna sit there and let's see. I'm about to take off that much. I'm not going to be able to T clamp it to this because this, these two wires is a lot thicker than what this is. So I'm not going to be able to find anything to sit there and clamp from that to this due to the different sizes. So I'm going to cut this off. I'll do that right now. I'll do it on camera. So I'm going to cut that off. That's so. And then I'm going to strip about one finger lip. Y'all, how y'all do it is up to y'all. This is how I'm gonna do it. And right for right now, it's gonna be temporary. I'm gonna find a clamp, a metal clamp or something like that. This one, and put y'all down to it. You see how this ground is mounted to a little metal piece? with a circle inside it for the bolt to go through. Right now, I'm just gonna have it wrap around on the backside of this bolt. And I'm gonna find a clamp and then I'm gonna mimic that and then mount it to here. So what I'm doing right now is just gonna be temporary. So it's not gonna be much of a clean install for now, but it's gonna be close to it. So I'm just trying to create my little slice to expose some of the wire i don't have um wire insulated strippers so all right got that all right so you're going to need a 10 mil i got extended socket i'm going to break loose this bolt Once again, like I said, um, this is just gonna be a temporary setup so I can find a metal, I'm not sure what this is called, but <laughs> one of those, and then I'll sit there and 
mimic that but for right now just for this install I'm, I'm gonna have it wrap around the inside of this bolt so I'm gonna have it wrap around like that and get it close to tight and then I'm gonna sit there and push it in there my sponger so make sure it stays right behind that screw. Alright. Now I'm going to tighten it. Oh, wrong direction. So it's back there. Just making sure any wires that's poking out, I'm wrapping it around that screw. And once again, I know I said that a couple times now, but it's just temporary how I'm hooking it up right now, the ground. So now we're gonna put that side cover back on. So to do that, there's a hole on the back side that sits right in front of that so we're gonna put this in first push it in and then for this side you want to pull out and this tab you see right there goes right behind that slot so pull back and then push in and then make sure that screws poking through like that and then we're going to put this piece back on put this in first make sure these tabs are lined up with the slots on the body of the car. Tap down, and uh, that's installed. So now we got our ground hooked up. I'm gonna have it dangle for right now. And then the positive, I'm gonna see which one I could tap that to. All right, so I'm gonna hook it up to this one right here. I just gotta see which one's not drawing power when the car's completely off. So I'm gonna hook this up to the little metal piece right here. Let me pull this down. I'm attaching the ground for this on there and then I'll be poking inside of each tab to see which one's drawing current and which ones are not. So this one is obviously a ground wire. It's solid black, so I'm not gonna worry about that one. Poke this in to the blue one. All right, so that's drawing. Let me show you what I'm doing. So see, it's not lighting up, so. That's not drawing power. This one's not drawing power. That one's drawing power. That's not, that's not, and that's not. So since this one's on the outer edge, let me verify that. So I'm gonna get the key. I'm gonna turn the ignition to the on, switch it to the on, and we're gonna test them again. All right, so now that's drawing power. Uh, that's drawing power. That's drawing power. So since this one is on the outer edge and closer to here, that's why I'm going to sit there and tap my positive for the auto dimming mirror to this one right here. Let me put the key back, take the key out. That way it's not on. Set that right there. All right, so I'm gonna try to do this without blocking the camera. So I'm gonna get the, yeah, this ain't really gonna work. So I'm gonna stick it through here. So what we're basically doing, I'm gonna stick both wires through here. And then we're gonna close it. This is what's included. So hopefully I don't block the camera. All right, update. I feel like these are a little bit too small that Toyota provides. So I'll be using this. It's a whole lot better. So I'm gonna go back to putting these together. All right, so what I had to do, just give me an update while I'm going along. I cut back some of this electrical tape to expose more of the wiring to fit this bigger T clamp in and I got them in there 
respective slots. So I really hope I'm trying to do this. So I'm gonna clamp it down. It look like I don't got it fully clamped down yet. See, it's still exposed. So I'm gonna try to do it from here. I I heard that bite. So, all right, so see, now it's fully down. Now I gotta lock it in place, clip it. So now that's secure. Now we're gonna reconnect this. And it looks like, I'm not sure if I can zoom in. It's clamped down. I think it's clamped down enough. All right, moment of truth. From your own. Let's see. Turn the ignition to on. Yep. All right. So let me turn this flash off. All right. So it's illuminated. So it's on. So let's test it. So the sensor is right there. So I'm going to put my hand behind it to mimic nighttime. Cover it. And it's getting darker, as you can tell. I remove my hand. You see, it's getting brighter. I'm not sure how well the camera. Is picking that up, so I'm gonna do it again. Cover that sensor. You can see how I'm dimming and the background's dimming compared to there. Let me move my hand. Yeah, I'm not really sure how well that's picking up on camera. All right, that's a little bit better since it's brighter. See, all of this is getting dark. I move my hand, it goes back to being bright. So we push this, now it's off. Now it's back on. All right, concentrate right here. I'm hoping, I didn't put it closer, probably that'll help. So concentrate in this area. So see how bright it is? If I cover that sensor, look how all that's changing compared to this area, it's getting darker. In person, it's like a really dark blue hue color. But on camera, it's not. Look at how the grass and everything looks on the mirror compared to this side. Now, if I remove my hand, yeah, it's kind of hard. See, now it went back to being bright again. So it is working. So start out the car. This is supposed to illuminate at night. So let's see, cover that sensor again. So I'm trying to figure out what, how does this turn on? I'm not sure if it's automatic too. Let me try covering the sensor. I might have to try to cover both sensors, I'm assuming. Cause that's on, so that should be powering on if I'm not mistaken. I'm not sure. It's only two connectors, so I'm assuming it's supposed to turn on. Let me see. What can I check this there? So it has to be night. So let me... I'm going to get some tape. I'm going to cover this. And then I'm going to cover the opposite sides. Well, let me see if I just turn on. If I cover it completely. I'm trying to see how I can mimic at night. Or I might have to test it at night. Oh, there you go. So I got it completely covered now. So that's how it would look at night. And then it would shine down. And look how, yeah, on the, look how the grass look in this corner where my thumb is compared to down there. And then if I remove it, it starts going bright. And that should be turning off automatically because, let's see. Yeah. So yeah, it turns off automatically. So when it's completely dark, that is working. So if I cover it completely again, no gap to mimic nighttime. Let's see how long. One, two, three, four. So it takes about four seconds for it to turn on as I'm mimicking nighttime. So that works. And that's illuminated as well. On the camera, it's not picking up that well. So that works. That works as well. 
So that's how you do uh, auto dim rear view mirror install into a second gen Toyota Vios 2009 2014 Toyota Yaris or Toyota Beltas. So that's it for this video. Like, comment, subscribe. I'll see you in the next one. Peace.